my name is Johanna Thornblad, and I am from Hive Blockchain Technologies. We are a crypto mining company, uh, and I am responsible for the Swedish operations of Hive. Um, today, I wanted to introduce you to Hive and also talk a bit about our ESG strategy, uh, where we mine only with renewable energy. Uh, and we also participate in a frequency balancing program that allows us to support the local grid where we operate to, to stabilize that grid. I think it's a very interesting and important initiative. Disclaimers. So Hive is a publicly traded company. Uh, in 2017, we were the first uh, crypto mining company to go public when we listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange. We have since also listed in Frankfurt, and a year ago, as you see here, we uh, listed on NASDAQ in New York. At this time, we manage six data centers, uh, two in eastern Canada, two in Iceland, and two in northern Sweden. Uh, it's at these data centers that we provide the computer power uh, that uh, provides the, the computer power for the Bitcoin and Ethereum mining. Uh, and all the mining is done in the cloud and for our own portfolio. Uh, all the coins that we mine are green virgin coins, green because they are from uh, renewable resources, uh, power sources. And um, because these are newly minted coins that have never been used or circulated in the system before. As of May 31st this year, uh, Hive had uh, over 3,000 Bitcoin on our balance sheet. We mined 273 new Bitcoins during the month of May. Uh, and we also mined almost 2,700 Ethereum. So we're one of the few mining companies to have since the start a very deliberate strategy of both mining Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, and actually, if you, if you make that Ethereum into Bitcoin, we would have mined over 450 Bitcoin. Uh, that's the Bitcoin equivalent for the month. And so it's been a tough time for crypto miners and uh, anyone who follows Ethereum or Bitcoin lately knows this, but uh, I wanted to show this slide because it's not something new to Hive. We've been around for a while and we've been through tough times in the past. Uh, here, what we're trying to show is we're a lean, mean, very efficient company. Uh, and even if the Bitcoin price were to stay here around $20,000. If Ethereum stays around $1,000, we still have a positive cash flow of 45 cents per share. Uh, if or when uh, Bitcoin goes back up to 40,000 uh, and we see levels we've seen in the past with Ethereum at 3,000, we would have a $2 per share positive cash flow. This. this is a slide that we always bring with us to all presentations because it's very important, especially when you're working in an industry like ours. Uh, here we're trying to show the comparison between, for example, the volatility of the S&P 500 of gold to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a company like ours, High Blockchain Technologies. Um, this is showing that 70% of the time it's a non-event for uh, S&P uh, 500 to go up or down 1% over a one-day period and 3% over, over a 10-day period. But looking then at Bitcoin, that same volatility would be 3% over one day up or down or 11% uh, over a 10-day period. And then take a look at Hive, who mines both Bitcoin and Ethereum and therefore moves very correlated with those two assets uh, and have a volatility of up or down 6% over one day and 17% over a 10-day period. 
So when we talk about our data centers, you probably realize that they are all northern location, and this is not um, something by coincidence, but rather a strategy. Uh, this is where we find our renewable energy, but it's also cold climate where we can use the cold air to cool our uh, equipment. We have a lot of equipment uh, in Sweden, which is where I spend most, most of my time. Uh, we get temperatures of minus 30 in the winter time, uh, but we have 17,000 miners at the facility or computers. We have over 100,000 GPUs, the chips, uh, the computer chips that are used to mine uh, Ethereum. And uh, many of you also know that those are the same computer chips that are used for HPC, for gaming, for uh, rendering, artificial intelligence. And I'm mentioning this also because it's a new area for Hive that we're investing in, that we're looking at, and very excited about this opportunity. Uh, at this particular data center, we use 32 megawatts of power. And this leads me in then to our ESG strategy. Here you see a, a photo of the power, uh, hydropower plant that is located 500 meters from our facility in the northern part of Sweden and provides us with all our green power. Uh, most of our uh, power uh, is derived from hydro. Uh, and for, for example, in this area, this is all stranded energy. If we weren't using it, it would not be used. So it's an area that has a lot of excess renewable energy, and that's why we're located right there. We also use a bit of, of geothermal energy in, in Iceland and a bit of wind. So I wanted to address some of the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is spread about the Bitcoin mining industry particularly. Um, Bitcoin mining actually stands only for 0.16% of the, the energy, the world's total energy use. And um, as late as, or as recently uh, as the, the first quarter of 2022, um, Bitcoin was 58, the Bitcoin um, miners used 58% renewable energy. And this is uh, something that's on everyone's mind. So it's something that is um, increasing. We are a public company. Our shareholders are requiring this. Uh, many are following our model and going that way. So what's very interesting in, is that data centers such as ours can actually help support the local grid um, by uh, providing the stability to balance supply and demand. Uh, and this is more and more important as we're shifting more to renewable resources uh, and as society is, is demanding more, more electricity. So in, in Sweden, uh, and why data centers are so good at this is because uh, we have a stable, a high stable uh, power supply 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, and we can share that supply with the grid because we're, we're uh, mining for our own wallet, no? Uh, so that we can decide exactly when we want to shut down our miners and provide that uh, power to the regional grid. And we're participating, we're the biggest participator in a program uh, in, in Sweden where we get called, there's a technology that literally calls us uh, when the regional grid needs extra power. In five seconds, we have to power down 50% of our fleet. In 30 seconds, we have to commit to, to power down the next called uh, power supply and provide that to the grid so that it becomes stabilized. Um, what's also interesting is that we get paid for this. Uh, so it's truly a win-win situation. We stabilize the local grid. We get reimbursed for that. Uh, and for example, a data center like, like Amazon probably would not be able to do this because they uh, then could interrupt workflows for their customers. But we, like I said, can just shut down our uh, mining operation, share the, the power, 
and then quickly uh, power back up again. And so I want to conclude, because I'm out of time, with some really nice projects that we're doing, because obviously with so much uh, equipment, we are uh, also producing heat. And in these northern locations, that excess heat can be, if harnessed correctly, can really be a good asset for the community. And so at our location in Le Chute, Quebec, uh, we're heating simply by transferring the hot air that we generate to the neighboring facility. It's a 4,000 square meter factory. Uh, we're heating their entire facility. Uh, we're also uh, participating in a research project with uh, RISE, the research institute in Sweden, and we're doing R&D with Intel so that our mining equipment keeps getting more and more efficient. And lastly, this is one of my pet projects. We have been participating in a co-creation project in a community in, in the northern part of Sweden to understand what their needs are. And the result of that project is that we will be providing the, the heat for a 1,000 square meter greenhouse that is expected to produce more than 200 tons of cucumbers every year, making that region basically self-sustainable in cucumbers. Uh, and phase two of that project is another greenhouse that would produce uh, up to two, uh, 280 tons of tomatoes each year. And um, it's really uh, quite significant when you see the location of our data center. We're way, way up north uh, where you see the reindeers, a uh, few people, uh, and very close to the Russian border. So you can imagine that food sustainability at this time is something that's on everyone's mind. And so I want to thank you for this opportunity and let you know that the mining community is aware that we need to improve. I think Hive is really taking a lead in that, uh, uh, making sure that we have a green footprint that we're improving. Uh, meanwhile, obviously, also providing shareholder value, but those things are totally uh, correlated and, and very important to keep in mind. So thank you very much. Gracias.